All right, so we're going to start chapter four. And um, as I'm starting that, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with uh, generally what an angle is. Um, by that, I mean, I mean that if you were to measure this angle, you know you would take your protractor, you'd throw down your, your center here, put out the, the zero here, and then measure up to uh, the ending uh, side here. So in general, I think you, you guys would know that. And um, also, you probably are thinking in terms of degrees. So you're familiar with degrees, and you, you would, if you were to guess, you would say this is maybe 30 degrees or so. Um, and so I'm going to, again, make those assumptions. Um, but now I'm just going to make sure that we understand a few things. Um, for one, if I were to start here and measure uh, counterclockwise, that would be the positive direction. And then if I were to start here and measure clockwise, that would be the negative direction. Right. And this side that you start your measurement on, or you initialize your measurement on, is called the initial side. And the side that you stop or terminate your measurement is called the terminal side. Terminal. Um, so those are some vocab words. Now we're going to start talking about um, a measurement other than degrees. It's called radians. And that might seem strange that we would not measure in degrees. What else could we measure in, right? Um, so before you start thinking that's too strange, um, you know, think about distance. We measure distance in lots of different ways. Inches, feet, miles, yards, meters. Um, we measure big distances in uh, light years and astronomical units. So distance has a lot of different ways that we measure it. And likewise, angles has a few. And one of them that we're going to talk about in this chapter is called radians. Um, so to give you an idea of what radians are, first think about a circle. And we'll throw down some, some terms, right? If I were to measure from the center to the outside, that would be called the radius. If I were to measure from one side through the center to the other side, that would be called a diameter. <clears throat> and along the outside, if I were to measure all the way around, you know, walk the entire perimeter of the, the circle, that perimeter for a circle is called the circumference. That's the measure all the way around. And you may or may not know that uh, to find or to take the circumference and divide it by the diameter, we get pi. That's where pi comes from. Um, if we were to multiply on both sides by d, we could get c equals pi times d. Okay, but when we we're saying how, you know, when to calculate circumference, it actually looks a lot, uh, well, not a lot different, a little different. We first take d to be two times a radius, right? A, a diameter is twice the size of a radius. So instead of uh, diameter, we write 2 times r. And then for some reason, we put 2 over here, and pi there, and r there. Um, so 2 pi r, 2 times pi times the radius, um, which is the same as 2 times r, which is the diameter times pi, gives us the circumference. Okay. So out of this is born, uh, sort of born, the uh, measurement of radians. Uh, so it, it kind of comes from this idea. Say we only measured some of the circle. And we wanted to talk about how much of the circumference uh, we have. right? Say we went halfway around. So we're halfway around the circle. We measure this angle here. It's 180 degrees. It's halfway around the circle. How much of the circumference is it? Right? The full, full circumference would be 2 pi r. But we have half of that. We have half the circumference. So we have 2 pi r divided by 2. Um, say we only went uh, a fourth of the way around the circle. Well, then we have a fourth of the circumference, or 2 pi r divided by 4. Um, and if we only went uh, an eighth of the way around, we would have the circumference 
over 8, or 2 pi r over 8. So if we were to measure uh, angles in the portion that we are around the circle, like an actual fraction of the way around the circle, then uh, you know we could just take that fraction and multiply it by r to find this, the uh, the what we call the arc length. Okay, uh, and oddly enough, <coughs> if we don't have the circumference, we don't have uh, the whole circumference. We, we really don't call it the circumference anymore. We call it the arc length. That's a piece of the circumference, and that we we represent by the letter S. Very strange, right? The letter S. So the portion of the circumference is called the arc length, which is represented by S. Um, so that's great if we know the fraction of the way that we are around the circle, but if we're measuring in degrees, it becomes a little more, uh, let's say, cumbersome. Right, if we started here, and we measure this, this looks really good. Um, start there and measure around to not a nice fraction, like a fourth or a half or whatever like that. We measure around to here. And let's say we find that it's 118 degrees. Um, so, you know, what fraction is that around the circle? Well, it's 118 out of 360 degrees. So that's the fraction that we are around the circle. 180 out of 300, or 118, pardon me, 118 out of 360. Um, well, I'm, I'm sure we could simplify that down to, to whatever that would be. But that's the fraction that we are around the circle. Then we could take that fraction and multiply it by the full circumference, which is 2 pi r, right? This isn't 1 fourth or 1 eighth or 1 half, but whatever it is, we can multiply that by 2 pi r, and that would give us the arc length. Um, but that's just a little bit cumbersome. Why don't we just, uh, rather than measuring the degrees and then dividing out the degrees, we could just say um, more like this. We'll just say we're, we're this far around the circle, and this part actually would turn out to be how we measure our angles. Rather than having to bring this uh, this degrees into it, um, we'll call these our radian measures. Okay, so remember this was halfway around the circle. This was at 180 degrees. Uh, this this two and this two can cancel out. So this would just be pi times r. We'll just take pi times the radius, and this pi is our radian measure. That's how many radians it is. So halfway around the circle would be <clears throat> pi radians. Here the 2 and the 4 could cancel, and we would get pi over 2 times r. And this part is our radian measure. Uh, so this would be pi over 2. Um, and this here, the 2 and the 8 would cancel, and this would be pi over 4 times r. So this would be our measure of our angle. So this would be pi over 4. So rather than measuring in uh, degrees and then turning that degrees into a fraction and then multiplying that fraction by uh, 2 pi r, we'll just say, well, we, two, we could treat 2 pi like all the way around the circle. That would give us right 2 pi like all the way around the circle. And if we multiply 2 pi, which is all the way, times r, we'll get the circumference. Uh, so all the way around, then, would be 2 pi. Okay. Uh, so we're starting to see, you know, kind of why we would measure in radians. Um, it's it involves this uh, this this number pi, and uh, it, it's directly related to the circumference and the arc length, and makes those calculations a little easier. And it's just a little more directly tied to the measurements uh, on a circle, the circumference and the diameter. Uh, rather than kind of an arbitrary measurement of degrees, which uh, just born out of um, dividing this this full rotation into 360 increments and calling them degrees. Um, so let me scroll down and I'll I'll draw a little bit better picture of of, of a lot more radian measures. Uh, so. 
measure through the center here, then we'll put a 90 there. Um, so all the way around, well, not anywhere would be zero radians. All the way around would be two pi radians. Right. Half of all the way around would be half of two pi, which would be pi. Uh, half of that would be, well, just half of pi. That'd be pi over two. Um, half of pi over two, if we haven't gone all the way to, to pi over two, but only gone halfway to pi over two, uh, that would be pi over four. Right. If we only go a third of the way uh, to pi, right? Uh, one third, two thirds, three thirds the way to pi. So one thirds would be one third of pi or pi over three. Uh, this we have as a sixth of the way. Um, let's say we go a fourth, and we go another fourth. Well, that would give us to uh, a half. And then we go another fourth, where we've gone three fourths. We've gone from from here to there to there. That's three fourths of a pi, or pi over, or, or three pi over four. Three fourths of pi. This is pi, and this is three fourths of the way there. Uh, what about here? What would this be? Well, this would be one third the way, two thirds the way, so two thirds of pi, or two pi over three. Uh, if we went over here, we'll just be one sixth of pi away from all the way to pi. So this would be one pi over six, two, three, let's see, uh, one, two, three. 4, 5 pi over 6, 5 6 of pi, 5 pi over 6. If we went another pi over 6, that would be 6, 7 pi over 6. And if we were to go at the uh, a fourth of the way down from here, we would be going 1 pi over 4, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4. We're going by fourths there. Here we're back to going by thirds. One, two, three, four pi over three. Uh, here we've gone by pi over two. One pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two. Here, pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over, let's see. Pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five, six, seven pi over four. Okay, let's so be by thirds again, one, uh, two, three, four, five, pi over three. And lastly, we've gone all the way around by sixths here, pi over six, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven pi over six. Right. If we went one more pi over 6, we would have gone 12 pi over 6, and that would be 12 divided by 6, 2 pi. Um, so these are the radian measures. Uh, so how would we, you know, how does this translate to angles? These, these radian measures are the common ones, of course. Uh, you could have any number of radians. You could have a million pi radians. You could have... Uh, pi over a thousand radians. You could have five radians and wouldn't even have pi in there. Um, so uh, these are just some common ones. Uh, and if we want to convert from radians to uh, degrees so that uh, we understand them a little better, uh, for one thing we could just say, well, if this is a sixth of the way to pi, and pi clearly is, is half the circle, and half the circle would be the same as 180 degrees. Then, uh, well, I could just say a sixth of 180, and that would be 30 degrees. Could kind of go around like that, and we could say, well, this is a fourth of 180, so that would turn out to be 45 degrees. Okay, and we'll see all these common angles come up that we use a lot uh, in degrees as well. But, uh, Better than that, more generally, uh, how would we convert from any given radians to degrees and vice versa? Uh, well, first think about if, um, 
is a quick example, if something was um, 147 inches, and we wanted to say, we don't normally measure in uh, a large number of inches, we measure in feet and, and portions of feet, uh, something like that. So how would we convert this from 147 inches to feet? Well, we're going to multiply it by um, what we call an equivalence ratio, something that um, shows that a number of inches and a number of feet are equal. Um, well, 12 inches and one foot are equal. Right? These are two equal measurements, and so to multiply by this fraction would be the same as to multiply by one, and so it doesn't change the actual value, just the appearance of this number. Uh, the inches cancel out, right? Cross cancellation here. Uh, so we just take 147 divided by 12, which is what I'm doing, and we get 12.25 feet. And that makes more sense to us. So how would we convert from radians to degrees or degrees to radians? Um, well, we just need one of these equivalence ratios. Like if I were to take pi over 3, uh, if I were to take pi over 3, and, when I'm, and uh, translate that into degrees, you know, at the end have degree uh, answer. Well, I'm going to multiply by an equivalence ratio so that what I have radians cancels out with radians. Right? We usually don't write radians, but we could write radians. Right? And then wind up with degrees so that the radians cancel out. Well, we need a number of radians that's equal to some other number of degrees. We have a, tons of those. Um, we have pi over 6 is the same as 30, so we could put 30 and pi over 6. We could put 45 and pi over uh, 4. Those are, are strange because we have fractions inside a fraction. So a really convenient one would be to use 180 and pi. 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. And so now what we get to do is so we cancel out the radian measures. We wind up with the degree. Also pi cancels out. Uh, so we can cancel out the pi, and we get 180 divided by 3. Uh, you can see we're doing the exact same thing as, as we were doing over here. 180 divided by 3 is going to be 60, 60 degrees. Uh, and we can do that with all these. This would turn out to be uh, 60. We just saw that. This, of course, would be 90. Uh, this 2 pi over 3, let's look at that, 2 pi over 3 radians times an equivalence ratio where we have radians equal to degrees. Of course, that's, again, pi radians to 180 degrees. Radians cancel, pi cancels, and we get uh, 180 divided by 3. Um, that was 60. Multiply that by 2, that's 120. So this is 120. Um, and this would be 135, and so on, and so on, and so on. And and we'd have all these degrees that are equal to radians. Uh, so you can see that if we have radians, if we want to convert to degrees, we need to multiply by 180 over pi, pi radians, because the radians will cancel out the radians and we'll wind up with degrees. Uh, so this goes from radians to degrees. And if we had degrees, um, let's say we had x radians, and if we had x degrees, we want to uh, convert to radians. Well, then we just need to convert, you know, cancel out the degrees. So we put the degrees in the denominator so that the degrees cancel. And we have 180 degrees in the denominator and pi radians in uh, the numerator. Uh, so that's how we convert from one to the other. Um, and just in case you missed it, let's go back to this arc length discussion. Um, for any arc length that we wanted to find, uh, then all we had to do is take the measure of the angle in radians. Remember how we were talking about that? Just take that radian measure pi, which is halfway around, times r, and you already have the uh, the arc length. It's just half of 2 pi r. Uh, and this is just uh, half of that. This is uh, 2 pi r over 4 or pi over 2 times r. Uh, and over here we have pi over 4 times r. Uh, and that would give us the arc length of, uh, of, a, of a piece of the circle, which we call a sector, the arc length of a sector that's 1 eighth the way around the circle. We just take that angle in radians, 
And the way we talk about an angle is to use this letter called theta. This is an angle. Uh, in, in this case, it's in radians. Uh, and we just multiply it by the radius. So there we go. There's the arc length. You multiply the angle in radians times r. Uh, if you were measuring in degrees, you would just need to turn the degrees into uh, radians and then multiply that by r. So we could just take uh, the angle, if it's in degrees, um, convert it to radians. OK, so uh, how do we convert it to radians? Here we have uh, an, an angle in degrees multiply by pi over 180. So multiply this by pi over 180 first. And then we'll multiply that by r. Because if this is in degrees and we multiply it by pi over 180, then this whole thing is in radians, just like uh, it should be. So there we go. We, uh, we talked about uh, radian measure. Hopefully you know what radians are. If you don't un completely understand my explanation of radians uh, and, the, and all that, just know that those angles that you're used to talking about, 30, 45, 60, 90, and then increments of 30, 45, 60, and 90 all the way around the circle uh, are equal to these radian measures. Um, and basically, pi is one half of a circle, and 2 pi is all the way around the circle. And then you start cutting it into to pieces from there, into thirds, fourths, uh, sixths, and halves, and, and so forth, just like I have here. Okay, so you don't fully understand why a radian is a radian, at least you can understand uh, that it's some piece uh, or part of the way around the circle. Uh, then we can convert from radians to degrees and vice versa, so that way and this way, from radians to degrees, degrees to radians, and we have arc length. Right? I would say we have two formulas in quotations, right? It's really one formula. Measure your angle in radians and multiply by the radius. If it's in degrees, convert it to radians and multiply by the radius. Uh, so that's where we are. That's what we've uh, at least talked about. We'll do some uh, sample problems in the next video. Thanks for watching this very, very long video. Sorry.